Yeah, I've, it's, it's here. Yeah, I'm just waiting for you to shout um, ready to go or action or whatever. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to NBL Live here at the Worthing Leisure Centre. I'm John Hobbs alongside my co-commentator for tonight, Daniel Hildreth. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the South Coast for tonight's NBL Division One encounter between host Worthing Thunder and the Leicester Warriors exclusively on the Basketball England YouTube channel as we continue our coverage of NBL Live. Good evening once again. I'm John Hobbs, alongside head coach of Academy Basketball League side Holy Trinity Storm and former Worthing Thunder head coach Daniel Hildreth. Daniel, hello, sir. Joining us... Well, and, and same with me. I'm just getting over mine, but you're joining us with a cold. How, yeah. are, you, how are you feeling? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm feeling fine, thank you. you know, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for having me and uh, obviously uh, hoping for a really exciting game for the crowd. Absolutely, and 2015 was the last time Leicester Warriors actually won on this court here uh, at the Worthing Leisure Centre. You yourself were actually the head coach of the Worthing Thunder that day. You know, obviously, we'll go to that in, in just a Thanks second. Thanks for reminding me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, um, you know, just going fast forward to tonight and just your overall thoughts on the two teams, how they've stacked up this season and what you expect. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think you've got two very different styles of play here with, with both teams, um, Worthing. Uh, look to shoot a, a lot of threes. Um, you know, they're very happy in a sort of a scrimmage environment. Uh, yeah, they play through structure, but they, they allow their guys to go out there and, and get loose and, and play, which is great. Um, the physicality that you would expect to come with, with Leicester, um, you know, Carl Brown gets these guys ready. They compete. They're very physical. Uh, there's never an easy game against Leicester. So, uh, you know, I think it, it makes out for a very exciting game and it's going to potentially be a battle of... Uh, skill and, uh, and and prowess on the offensive end versus the hustle and tussle on the defensive end. Absolutely, and you know, Nick Stevens is first year as a head coach here at the Worthing Thunder. Obviously, you yourself in that hot seat yourself, you know, for, for many years, you know, what is um, what is Nick like as a person, as a, a head coach? What, have you, what do you know of him? Yeah, I mean, obviously this is first uh, Nick's first term uh, as a head coach at this level. Um, we uh, have, you know, seen that he's obviously having an input from the sidelines. Um, you know, with very experienced guys like Alex Arumi and Zaire Taylor, um, you know, their voices can be heard throughout, you know, training and, and timeouts, and will do with it throughout the games as well. Um, but you know, I think I think it's obviously is his first year. They they started well enough. Um, it'll be exciting to see how they um, how he gets on. And uh, before the game, we caught up with uh, Leicester Warriors head coach Carl Brown for his views on the game. But first, we go to Worthing Thunder's Zaire Taylor, who talked to us earlier about his preparation for this game tonight. Okay, Zaire, just talk about how the week has been for you guys and your preparations going into today's game. Um, we didn't do anything new. We try to keep it simple, stick to our game plan. I feel like after a slow start, we're starting to come together. We just need to keep it going, going over the plays, and just building consistency and chemistry. And so far, I feel like we've been doing that. Obviously, you guys had kind of a rocky start to the season. You've now won six games in all competitions, five in the NBL. What has been the uh, the process so far for you guys? 
Um, the process is, I mean, we've had some new additions, which have been a big help, Dom and AJ. And other than that, I feel like it's just taking the time to build that chemistry and become one cohesive unit. I feel like we have all the talent as individuals, and it's finding where that all gels. Cam has already proven that he's an amazing scorer, not for his age, but just as a basketball player. I've been one of the better scorers in this league, Alex. So when you put that together, it's like, where do we all find our baskets? Where does everybody else find theirs? And finding that system. And I feel like we're slowly getting that. I feel like we're only 60% of the team that we're going to be. And Zaya Taylor there, just talking about the, the, you know, the, the whole process of uh, what it's been happening this week and everything. But uh, as we go back to the screen, obviously the crowd here tonight, and Daniel, you know as good as anyone, you know, just how, uh, how loud this crowd can be, how full it can get. A great tradition, Worthing, always one of the better game nights in the NBL. Yeah, hands down one of the better nights, uh, it goes without saying. Um, uh, obviously a great crowd in again tonight. I can see that the uh, Sussex Storm girls are in there making some noise. They bought a drum, so I'm sure it's going to get pretty loud. Um, and yeah, as always, you know, any player you want to play in a great environment. And, you know, when you come to, to somewhere like Worthing, you know, it can be, it, it can be uh, less of two evils because the opposition gets up for it as well. And before the game, we spoke to Leicester Warriors head coach Carl Brown, who came from the Midlands and had a lot to say. Okay, Carl. In from the in from the cold. Uh, obviously, a t long trip from the Midlands. Just what has been the week like, and how are the guys feeling ahead of tonight's game? Yeah, it's, it's been a, a good long trip uh, down to the south coast. We've had a good training session this week. We're missing a couple of players, but we're ready to go. We want to get our legs ready off the long off the long bus journey. But we're ready, and we know that uh, Worthing is going to be a tough task. It's obviously a very competitive Leicester side. I haven't won here since 2015. You know, what is the uh, the game plan going into today's game? Well, that's a great stat. Game plan, Brett. <laughs> I try and keep things simple. Is uh, We want to come in, play good defence, get off to a good start because we struggle to, to start well in games, especially on the road. And we want to contain you know, Cameron Hildreth, uh, Awumi. We know that Zaire, he's going to try and put up big numbers. And also, we've got to look at the rest of the guys, Tom Ward and the other guys off the bench. So we want to come in and we, we need to start well and we need to be consistent. Move the ball, play good defense and hit our open shots. And as the two teams prepare to be introduced, the lights will go out in just a second as uh, the two teams will be... Uh, Coming out onto the floor, we will be back in just a minute to get the starting fives and bring you all the action from the Worthing Leisure Centre. Worthing Thunder against the Leicester Warriors. And we're back in the two teams coming out onto the floor. We start with the Worthing Thunder roster and obviously Daniel, Cameron Hildreth, your your son, having such a great start to the season. Just talk about how uh, he's uh, he's performing and obviously the, uh, the the team in general. Yeah, I mean obviously Cameron um, has, has started pretty well uh, this year. Um, obviously it's an unknown going into to men's level competition, you know, having played juniors, um, he's still just turned 17. Um, and, you know, so far the way that the, the guys have, you know, developed him into the to the competition, uh, you know, they've helped him consistently throughout practice and game time and stuff. I just think that, you know, at the moment he's, uh, he's done very well. And then we'll uh, move on to the Leicester Warriors team. A um, few players did not travel with the uh, Warriors today. Um, Jamal Lewis, Joshua Pollock and Henry Langton have remained in the Midlands. Albeit though, it's still a competitive team, Daniel. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Leicester could turn up with uh, five players and they're going to compete for 40 minutes. Uh, that's just how Carl gets them ready to play. Um, so, you know, there's only five players on the court at any one time, so they're going to be ready, that's for sure. And TJ Henderson, number six, definitely a player to look out for. Been scoring big for the Warriors uh, this season. A lot of the focus you feel on, on, from, on Thunder's defence will be going towards TJ Henderson. Yeah, I mean, obviously a big body. That's something that, that size is something that, that Worthing lack. Um, but, you know, they make up for it in other areas. Um, I feel that, you know, if they're able to, to contain him inside and keep him off the boards, then um, uh, that will be a big advantage for them. Absolutely, and uh, TJ Henderson will be starting for the Leicester Warriors tonight alongside veteran small forward Martin Gale, Roderick Hall, another of the Americans on the Leicester Warriors team. 
uh, Carl Pearson, Laman Willen, and for the Worthing Thunder, Cameron Hildreth will be starting alongside Zaire Taylor, AJ Bassey, Alex Awumi, and Dominic Ives. It's a strong starting five for the Thunder, a team that like to shoot the ball quite a lot. And do you feel that's their strength? Is there anything else that you can think of that uh, Worthing have there, Daniel? I mean, it, it gives them the opportunity to really space out the floor. I mean, all five of those guys can shoot the basketball. Obviously, obviously there's an absence of Tom Ward today, mm. who's been playing exceptional basketball this year. Uh, I've been really impressed with how he's been shooting the ball, and, and I think he's been uh, an X factor for these guys. Um, I feel that, uh, you know, being able to spread the floor, five guys being able to shoot from the perimeter, it then obviously opens up opportunities to get to the basket as well. Absolutely, and as I said, this is the second NBL live stream of the season. We were at Solent at the beginning of November, where Solent defeated the Bradford Dragons. We'll be back in Solent next week, actually, for a double header of basketball there as the Kestrels take on the Loughborough Riders in the first of the WNBL games will be live streaming and then after that the Solent Kestrels will take on the Hemel Storm but Daniel I spoke to my co-commentator Nick um, Mark Halwood sorry in Solent about this I want to get your thoughts on just the NBL live stream the experience obviously the British Basketball League do it and now we're NBL doing it what are your thoughts on this oh it's fantastic at the end of the day any exposure I feel is good exposure um, you know you've got you've got a number of Americans in the league now over here they you know their families don't get to see these guys play it gives that opportunity um, you know and, and certainly in these cold winter nights sometimes uh, people don't want to get out and travel uh, to the game so I think I think it's great for the sport I think it's great for the for the players individually um, you yeah, know so yeah I'm really pleased to be pleased to be a Part of it as well and if you are just joining us on youtube welcome obviously get your comments in please like share subscribe to the basketball england youtube channel and get notified for whenever we have a live stream encounter we'll be bringing you games for the next three weeks obviously starting here on the south coast we'll be in solent next week for a double header of wnbl and nbl division one action and then following that we'll be in loughborough And obviously the sponsors for tonight, Wilson, SportServe and Dynamic. There are game night NBL sponsors. Obviously the Wilson, the match ball of the National Basketball League. We are one minute away from tip-off. As said before, the Starting five tonight for Worthing Thunder, Cameron Hildreth, Zaire Taylor, AJ Bassey, Alex Awumi, and Dominic Ives for the Leicester Warriors, TJ Henderson, Martin Gale, Roderick Howe, Carl Pearson, Laman Willen. And our referees for tonight, Ian Lester. Tim Brown and Benny Osgore. And as is tradition here in Worthing, the crowd will be standing up and supporting their team. There's a lot of Worthing Thunder fans. They like to make a lot of noise, as you will hear. Yeah, that's Throughout right. Throughout the game. That's right. They stay standing until the first Worthing Thunder basket. Um, so let's hope that they win the jump ball, uh, score on their first possession, and everybody can sit down and enjoy the game. And as I look at the uh, opening YouTube comments, Storm Basketball Club, it was only natural that they would be uh, tuning in. May need to listen to you. What's, what's with the hashtag, they can't take him anywhere? Or is it something like along them lines? There, there's this rumour <laughs> that I talk a lot. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure it's true, but um, yeah, they find it funny anyway. <laughs> you don't talk that much. No. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's Kyle Youngman, if anyone wants oh, to know. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> a lot of support for, some support for the Leicester Warriors. They're calling for... TJ Henderson to have a triple-double tonight. Very high-scoring player is uh, TJ Henderson. And this will be our first look at him. He's the Leicester Warriors number six. And 
And as we get ready for the uh, the tip off, we are experiencing some issues with our scoreboard, just so you're aware. So we will keep you updated as much as we can. In fact, no, the scoreboard is there now. It's the timer we're having an issue with, but we will uh, definitely keep you updated as much as we can with that. Pearson with the first possession for the Warriors, being guarded by AJ Bassey. Long three, and that's good for um, Martin Gale. Good start there from the Warriors. I think his toe was on the line, Swiss. I think it's just a two that time. It's a two-pointer indeed. Warriors off the mark for two. Taylor driving to the basket, off the glass, short. And the rebound there from Roderick Howe. Here is Carl Pearson. Pearson looking for options. Finds it in Henderson, being guarded by Hildreff. Three is long from Henderson, but a rebound there from Willen. Willen with the turnaround jumper, no good. Ives with the rebound, and here is Cameron Hildreth for the thunder. Awumi thought about the three. Runs into oh. trouble, turns it over. Poor pass from Awumi, and Martin Gale picks it up. Leicester spreading the ball around nicely. Inside, Willen for two. Beautiful move from... Lemon Willem. Yeah, lack of communication in transition there for, for Worthing, um, allowing Willem to be open and drive off of that. Ives puts up a long two. In fact, it's a three. Check that, and it goes in, rattles it home. And the crowd can now sit down. And the crowd, yeah, and the crowd can now sit down. That was the first points for Thunder. Henderson. Deep three, puts it in. TJ Henderson with his first points of the evening. Yeah, playing very composed offensively, Leicester. Um, know what they're looking for. Hildreth steps over the timeline. Bassey. Hildreth drives to the hoop. Stun a step and goes in. Beautiful move from Cameron Hildreth. Almost tripping over himself as he was going for that layup, but it was all good. Yeah, again, just, you know, going on about what I spoke about earlier, you know, it's being able to spread the floor, gives opportunities to guys to drive inside. How with the short hook shot was no good. And here is Bassey. Thunder can now break in transition. Nice pass. And Awumi was fouled there. I think that was on Martin Gale. And Leicester leads 7-5 to five with 7.27 remaining. Still having some issues with our clock. Taylor collects it from Awumi. Taylor thought about the three, instead drives. And Carl Pearson was caught there with a foul. Zaya Taylor is just a very tough matchup for, for anybody in, in this league. And obviously, you know, an ex BBL guy, um, he can score in a multitude of different ways. Um, you know, he's deceptively strong as well in the post. So, uh, there's going to be a touch, tough matchup for Carl Pilsen. Bassey with the step back jumper short. And the rebound from Gale, long rebound from Martin Gale, and Leicester can now break. It's a poor pass though, Willen collects it. Oh, who's out of bounds? Ball goes, yeah, ball goes out of bounds, that'll be a Worthing possession. But either way, you know, first three minutes, Daniel, a solid start from the Warriors. Yeah, as I say, they're executing really well offensively. Um, uh, seem to be getting, getting the looks that they're after. Uh, obviously, the, the out of bounds there wasn't exactly what they wanted, but uh, yeah, they're, they're playing with great discipline and structure on the offensive end. Hildreth, nice pass from Hildreth, kicks it out. Taylor for three, it's good. Yeah, Zaya nice Taylor from downtown. That's his first point of the night. Yeah, Zaya displaying his uh, three-point ability early. Hal inside. Wild shot, but he gets his own rebound and Leicester can reset. Here's Willen, kicks it out. Pearson from the baseline goes in. And both teams trading buckets and just a quick stoppage in play while Alex Awumi ties his laces. Oh, 
What have you made of uh, Worthing's start thus far, though, Danny? Um, defensively, I don't think they're uh, really making any impact on the game. Um, as I say, Leicester are executing very well, getting the shots they want, moving the ball well. Um, you know, giving up nine points this quickly in the in the quarter, I don't think they'll be too happy with that. Bassey looking for Hildreth, but instead finds Roderick Howell. And now Warriors can break. Pearson for three. It's long. And loose ball picked up by Bassey. And now Worthing can oh, break. Kick. And quick thinking there from Martin Gale as Bassey was looking for Hildreth. It came off Gale's foot, so it'll stay a Worthing possession. And the Warriors lead nine to eight first substitutions of the game. Alex Wilson... And Ewan James come in, and Roderick Howell and Martin Gale take a seat. Leicester only travelling with eight players today. Um, obviously, going to have to make quick rotations. Hildreth for three short, and Pearson with the rebound. Willen with a pull-up jumper, all string from Laman Willen. Worthing bit slow there to get up to the shooter and Willen made no mistake Leicester up 11 to 8 Taylor Ives finds some room and his three is off the mark and here come Leicester Willen pushing the ball and a whistle has gone I think that's a shooting foul as well it looked I think to be on a Wumi. in fact no it's not it's on AJ Bassey that's his first foul and Lamin Willen will go to the line for two and a lot of players uh, Danny have from the Leicester Warriors standpoint have stayed with this club for a number of years Willen is, a, is a number one, another one of those players this is his fifth season with Leicester is this the, the mentality that Carl Brown has as a coach keeps those players engaged with the, uh, the programme yeah, I mean, obviously he's very well respected. Um, you know, the Midlands have got a number of uh, teams, obviously. Leicester Warriors here tonight, Loughborough Riders, um, Derby. Um, so there, there's an opportunity to move around, but, uh, you know, he, he managed to keep hold of the guys, or the core guys, each year, which is obviously um, it's good moving forward. Williams split his free throws there. Here is Taylor. You and James... Marking him, Taylor inside. That's too easy for Zaire Taylor. Yeah, that's, a, that's a matchup they need to exploit if that's how it's going to be. Get him in the post, um, let him go to work. Taylor moves on to five. Willen. And good defence there from Alex Awumi. Willen had to improvise in mid-air, but his pass was off. And the Warriors still lead 12 to 10. And four minutes and 39 seconds left in the first quarter. Here is Taylor looking for options. Here is Bassey. Shot clock at six. Bassey inside and a foul has been called just as there was four seconds left on the shot clock. And it will be an inline possession to Thunder with 4.32 remaining in this first quarter. Not really sure what Williams complaining about on that one. He put his hand in there trying to steal the ball. You know, as a coach, certainly at the lower level, you're trying to get guys to play defense, keep their body in front. Um, you know, he played lazy on that one, so he needs to keep his hands out, otherwise he's doing what he's doing now. He's going to sit down on the bench. A Wumi for three is good. And Worthing regained the lead 13 to 12 with 4.20 remaining in the first. I mean, this guy can really shoot the basketball, you know, when he's got his feet set, you know, the consistency that, that he shoots with the same form, he you know, shoots at a very high rate. Jabby was into the game for the first time for Willen. Here is Jabby on the turnaround, rattles it home. And the 6'7 centre from Spain gets off the mark. Taking advantage of the switch on that one, posting up Cameron Hildreth. Taylor finds some daylight, fakes his man, goes up, blocked by Jabby, and now Leicester can break. Good defence there from Jabby, blocking Taylor. TJ Henderson for three, short, but Leicester get their own rebound. Here is Henderson again. And they reset the play with eight on the shot clock. Inside to Jabby. Off the glass, strong. Hildreth with the rebound. 
And now Cameron Hildreth can break, kicks it out. A Wumi for three. Oh. And good play there from Dominic Ives, keeping the ball alive, but it comes to a Leicester player. Here is Henderson. Henderson inside, and the layup is too short there from Wilson. It's going to go out of bounds for a Worthing ball with 3.08 remaining. And Ishmael Fontaine will come into the game for the first time. AJ Bassi takes a seat. Ishmael's a great energy guy. He gets the crowd going as well. So I'm looking forward to see if he can make a play early and uh, really pump this team up. Absolutely a solid fan favourite here at, uh, at the Thunder in his second season with the team. Previous uh, experience in the BBL with the, the old Milton Keynes lines. Obviously, they've now relocated to London. He's also had a stint in Germany as well. And Martin Gale comes in for Carl Pearson. Worthing still yet to make a, a substitution, but uh, Coach Nick Stevens a lot of faith in his starting five. Yeah, I mean, the, the bench is not uh, particularly deep for Worthing. Um, they, a, lot of, a few guys play a lot of minutes. Um, that seems to work for these guys. There are a lot of experienced guys out there, so, you know, they, they use that in their favour. Here is Henderson as we go to two minutes and 35 seconds left in the first quarter. Long three there from, well, long two, sorry, there from James. It's no good. Fontaine with the loose ball. Here is Hildreth. We're going to post up Awumi. And he gets it. Awumi with the ball. Good pass to... Oh, foul. Ives counted in the foul. My view was actually blocked there as Nick Stevens was, was just in the centre there. But Dominic Ives inside for two. He'll go to the line plus the foul. And Dominic Ives, three seasons with the Worcester Wolves. Yeah, it was a great cut from Dominic. Obviously, uh, the double team came into the post, and, you know, as a coach, you want your guys to move uh, off the ball. Uh, he found a nice gap, and great play from him. Misses his uh, free throw. Here is Henderson. Oberon Lacroix is about to check in for the Thunder for the first time. Henderson with the long floater, short. And Taylor with the rebound. Here is Hildreth. Hildreth attacking the hoop off the glass. Partially Good blocked defense. there from Jabby, but Ives on the follow. Jabby's an athlete, huh? Couple of big defensive plays from him. Couple of blocks already. Thunder now leads 17-14. With 1.35 remaining. Henderson thought about the three, but instead... Kicks it out to Gale. Gale with the pull-up jumper is good. Martin Gale with the mid-range jumper. One of the veteran guys for Leicester. Um, I really like how this guy plays. He understands the game and uh, he plays within his limitations. Um, he's, he's a great asset to this team. And second season in Leicester, Martin Gale. Again, another player with BBL experience. Ives, Taylor. Nice passing around from Thunder and Ives with the finish. And Thunder lead 20 to 16, final minutes of the first quarter. Great hand. And Henderson there. tried to split the defense, and Fontaine with the throwdown. Mr. Energy. Here is Henderson for the Warriors. Wilson. Gale pulls up for a three, in and out. Good defense there from Fontaine. I think it's going to stay a Leicester possession. Hildreth saying it did not come off him last. I think it did. Lacroix comes into the, to the game. And Cameron Hildreth will take a seat. Hildreth with two points and a rebound. And no doubt will come back into the game at some point. Here is James. James with the floater. Battle under the basket. Fontaine with the, with the board. And Thunder can hold now for the final possession. They lead by six. And Taylor slowing the play down. So whether or not they can see the mismatch again with um, Alex Arumi in the post. Leicester just switch. So I think Zaire is going to run this one out and do it himself. No. Kicks it out. Awumi for three is Great. good on the buzzer. 
Alex Awumi from downtown. Great composure from these guys, just, you know, expressing their experience once again. You know, there's no rushing, ended up with a, a wide open look. Absolutely, and Worthing Thunder take a 25 to 16 lead at the end of what has been quite a fast paced first quarter. Not a lot of stoppages in it, but that kind of suits Worthing Thunder's play. Yeah, 100%. I think these guys are trying to outscore you every time you step out on the floor every night. Um, I think that suits them. Uh, a high-scoring game, I think, is going to be better. Uh, for Leicester, you know, I thought they started really well. Great execution. They lost their way a little bit uh, towards the end of the, of the quarter. Um, and then, obviously, as I say, the, the experience of Worthing towards the last uh, few possessions, um, you know, was obviously the difference in, in the quarter to this point. Absolutely. Dominic Ives with 10 points to lead the Thunder. He leads all scorers. As a matter of fact, Laman Willem with five to lead the Warriors. But if you were Carl Brown, what would you be saying to your team right now? Um, yeah, sort of just what I said. You know, I, I feel like they, they need to slow the game down a little bit more. Um, uh, early stages, they executed very, very well. Um, I, I would be very surprised if at some point uh, they don't switch up their defense a little bit. They're, they're notorious for playing a zone that, that Carl has them playing that very, very well. Uh, maybe a dangerous uh, uh, game against such great shooters, but, but sometimes you sort of dare teams into doing that and it works in your favor. Um, you know, there's some, some obvious mismatches on the floor uh, in Worthing's advantage on the offensive end. So um, it'd be interesting to see how, how Carl gets these guys to adapt. And it's as you were for the Thunder. They ended the first quarter with this five. They come back onto the floor. Yeah, Carl's left the same, uh, left the group, yep. the same group of guys out there. Absolutely. And it's just uh, as we you know, start the, the second quarter, just you know, talk about uh, the different initiatives that Basketball England have. Obviously, all girls basketball. I know. Um, Storm Basketball have started a, a women's team in their own right in the junior ranks. Just obviously talk about this, the Slam Jam um, initiative, though, from Basketball England. Obviously, youngsters of all ages can start to play basketball at an early age, and obviously you guys at Storm Basketball encourage that quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, we've just started our, our foundation program, uh, so we're working with, with these youngsters. It's a fantastic program. It's, it's enticing for the kids. Um, you know, and, and I, I wish it wasn't the case, but little things like you get a bag of, get a bag of water bottles, all those sort of things, yeah. you know, and, and, it, and it just highlights what you're doing and why you're doing it and stuff. But, yeah, the initiatives that Basketball England are coming up with at the moment are fantastic. The All, the all Girls is, is just you know, it's great to see, um, you know, people seem to be buying into it. And obviously us as a club, you know, who, who historically have been uh, focused more on the on the boys' basketball and the men's basketball, uh, you know, we want to bring our, our female contingent up to that same level. Mm -hmm. And that's our goal, that's our passion, and, and, and we'll make sure we get there. Absolutely. And uh, if you've just joined us on YouTube, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And a, a lot of love for, for Daniel Hildreth here tonight, especially from the representatives from Storm Basketball. The hashtag can't take him anywhere is still still going. <laughs> and uh, Ian Marshall from the uh, new NBL Division 3 club, Bogner GSD, getting involved as well. But I'm not going to say what he's saying on, on air. <laughs> yeah, I, I coached Ian um, one year here at, at Worthing. Uh, just a, gr a great teammate. That's the best way to describe him. Literally was the perfect teammate. Howell inside, and Howell scores, and Leicester get off the mark here in the second quarter. Worthing lead 25-18. We're still having some issues with our clock, 9-21 left in the second, still early on. Awumi with the jumper is good from Alex Awumi. He's playing great right now. Last couple of weeks, I've just been, been really, really impressed. He just seems locked in and... Um, you know, a leader in all, all aspects of the game, but, um, you know, he stepped up, he's scoring and uh, playing very, very well. Awumi moves on to eight points, and in the reply was Willen, who is really having a great game himself for the Leicester Warriors. Yeah, he gave Alex the stare down as well, so uh, <laughs> let's look out for that matchup, see if they keep going at it. Taylor looking for options, kicks it out, Ives for three. Dominic Ives is long, Taylor. 
gets the rebound. Awumi puts up a three and he knocks it down. Worthing Thunder with a three-pointer at the second attempt. This and guy is good. <laughs> <laughs> and Carl Pearson on the ball. Typical coaches reply that. <laughs> Pearson. Again, Leicester playing with good composure offensively. You know, they're running their sets. And Taylor with the foul there. Wasn't a fan of that foul, but the referees saw that he reached in. That's Taylor's first foul of the evening. Yeah, again, these guys have got to be careful. Obviously, they don't they don't rotate a lot, so foul trouble can become a factor later on in the game if they're not careful. So, you know, again, I mentioned earlier, reaching in unnecessarily. Um, you know, they don't want to put themselves in a predicament where later on in the game, guys are going to have to sit. And Thunder's defence just fell asleep there in Lacroix with the foul as Ewan James was going to the hoop off that inbound play. Yeah, that's just frustrating as a coach. You know, you've had a time for the ball to go out, the call to be made, and, the, you know, you should be in the right position already. Um, you know, to give up a foul like that is, is very unnecessary. And Ewan James to the line. First season, one of the few Leicester Warrior players that is in their first season with the team. Spent last season with the, the Nottingham Hoods. A really talented shooting guard off the bench. Provides great energy like Ishmael Fontaine does for the Thunder. And Ewan James makes them both. Here is Taylor for Worthing, who but, lead 30 to 23. But his own pressure up the floor for, uh, from Leicester, trying to slow the game down, as I said earlier, which I think will help them over the long run. Taylor, Ives, kicks it out. Fontaine thought about the three. Instead, of Wumi collects it, nearly lost it. Shot clock. Shot clock's winding down. They've got to put up something. Taylor with a big three. And the ball kicked out by Ishmael Fontaine. It'll stay a Leicester possession. Worthing up seven with 7.42 remaining in the second quarter. So obviously defensively they look to slow the game down a little bit, put a bit of pressure on and then, you know, you forced Worthing into a, a potentially a shot clock violation. Um, you know, these guys have got to be aware that when you're walking the ball up the court against some pressure, you've got to get into your sets quickly. Pearson for Leicester. Pearson drives on a Wumi, kicks it out. Willen, and he kicks it out again. Gale for three. Banks it home. The bank is open on a Saturday night here in Worthing. I'm and not, Martin Gale makes no mistake. I'm not sure he called it, but they all count. <laughs> they all count. Hildreth and Bassey about to check in to the game. Fourth Thunder, here is Taylor, nearly lost it. Instead, Taylor puts up a long three and it rattles in. Zaire Taylor from downtown. That's his second three of the evening. And Zaire Taylor really almost infamous in this league for NBA range three-pointers. That's his first NBA range three of the game. Yeah, it's so tough. You play you, a decent job defensively and then a guy just jacks it up from... 40 feet and it goes in there's not a lot you can do sometimes. There's nothing more demoralising as a player when you've played good D you step back and there's a, a guy shoots an NBA range three and it drops in as uh, Ishmael Fontaine and Oberyn Lacroix come out of the game Bassey and Hildreth come in and Ewan James comes uh, out of the game and TJ Henderson comes back Thunder going into a horn set offensively No. Stop that, and yeah, they cancel that. Hildreth instead drives to the hoop, and he was fouled. It was a late whistle from the referee, but uh, Martin Gale with the... No, in fact, it was on TJ Henderson. I think that's Henderson's first foul. It is. And Cameron Hildreth will go to the line. And, and, and Daniel, I know you, when we agreed to do uh, the commentary for tonight... Obviously, Cameron, we were bound to talk about uh, Cameron Hildreth having a breakout season in the National League. But from a guy of three years old shooting a basketball when you were a player yourself, trying to shoot, shoot at the Worthing Leisure Centre hoops, to now, uh, incredible to, uh, you know, um, growth for Cameron. And just talk about him as both a coach and as a father. 
Um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough, if it, it's a tough conversation to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you know, as a as a coach and a, and a dad at the same time, you're telling you're telling your son to get back on defense, to box out, to go and clean your teeth, to tidy your room, you know, and, and trying to get that balance right. Um, I had some very wise words from Steve Nelson, uh, obviously a British basketball legend, uh, with him coaching Luke Nelson, who's now obviously uh, playing in Spain and had a, a fantastic career in, in America. Um, you know, and it, it's about dad being dad and, and coach being coach. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll be the first person to tell you that that I hate him on the basketball court, and he hates me as his coach. Uh, he'll agree with that. Um, but no, we have a we have a very strong relationship outside of that. And um, you know, he he's done well to to this point. But you know, this is very early stages for him and and, and his goals and, and dreams to to succeed in this in this sport. Absolutely, averaging 19 points a game, and no doubt a few people that I know of that I've spoken to about tonight's game have tuned in specifically to watch Cameron in action, and it's certainly great to see. A guy that I remember personally just shooting a basketball at three, four years old and barely hitting the rim to now averaging the numbers he's averaging. And an assist there for Hildreth as he tees up Awumi for three. And Thunder now lead 38 to 28. Yeah, he's actually coming off uh, the back of an injury. He hasn't played all week. Uh, he hurt himself last week in the Westminster game. Um, we've tried to manage that with his load and, and he hasn't played all week. So today was a, a real test to see whether he could actually even get out there. So... Uh, it's good to see that he's, he seems to be moving okay on it. Uh, let's see how the game develops for him. Here is Hildreth, kicks it out. Ives for a long two, and it rattles home. And Carl Brown has seen enough. He wants a timeout. I, th I think that's the different dynamic that Cameron brings to this team. He pushes the ball. Uh, he forces these guys to play at a, a, a faster pace. Um, and, uh, you know, as you see in the last couple of possessions, that works well for them. Obviously, there's the replay of Dominic Ives is two that forced Carl Brown's hand into that timeout. And Dominic Ives now leading all scorers. He has 10. In fact, no, he doesn't. He, Alex Awumi leading all scorers, excuse me, with 14 points. Dominic Ives now has 12. But uh, Dominic shooting the ball very well. But Thunder, in their own sense, shooting the ball very well, have 60% from the field. Yeah, as I say, you know, you got you got scorers. That, that's what they've got. Um, you know, and when your biggest guy on the floor, Dominic, is able to step out to the perimeter. You know, I, I've said this before, and I'm sure it won't be the last time I say it. You know, they spread the floor well. You know, everybody can shoot the ball from outside. It creates opportunities to drive, penetrate, and kick. And you know, you got if your biggest guy on the floor can shoot the three, then it makes it very difficult to defend. Absolutely, Thunder leading 40 to 20, and as you can see on our screen, assistant coach James Quinto leading the time out there before the Thunder. Nick Stevens, the head coach in the grey top there, giving some slight instructions as well. But that's a good thing to see as a head coach, letting your assistant coach at times lead the time out and just letting them progress yeah. in their future. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we, we, we talked earlier about Nick and, you know, we've talked about the fact there's a lot of experience on that on that team. Um, you know, guys that have played, uh, you know, obviously had incredible uh, college careers, have had prof great professional careers. Um, you know, it, it, it's a it's a way to give these guys input. Uh, nice that James, you know, had had his input into that timeout as well. And you saw that Ishmael uh, also commented. Uh, I think that these guys just understand how to play and, and they can communicate well on the court and obviously off it as well. Absolutely, James Quinto, uh, a coach, one of the many coaches actually from the uh, Basvik school, of course, Basvik playing in the Elite uh, Basketball Academy League. Josh Goddard's in the game for um, Worthing. Yeah, Josh Goddard into the game for the first time. Here comes Hildreth off the turnover. Nice pass to Bassi. His shot was partially blocked by Howe. And Leicester can now break with it. Here is Gale. That Gale now slowing the play down with 4-12 remaining in the second quarter. Nice play there from Awumi, stripping it back. And here comes Taylor Worthing. Have numbers, it's two on one. Bassey pull up three, way short. Not sure that was the best uh, shot they could have got that time down. Uh, three on two situation, pull up three. If it goes, great. But if it doesn't, then, uh, you know, everybody's looking around at each other like, what are we doing? Absolutely. And you can see the frust slight frustration on uh, Cameron Hildreth's face as uh, Bassey pulled up for that three. But... but as I say, if you make it, it's a great shot. Absolutely. If you don't, then, uh, you know, you you're going to get people not very happy about it. 
Let's see what they can do on the defensive end now. Leicester looking to walk the ball up and hopefully uh, run a solid set. Here is Henderson. Henderson driving at Goddard, gets bumped by Goddard, but he'll go to the line for two. Yeah, again, you know, it's frustrating as a coach. You know, Josh has got great body position there. Um, you know, you're forcing a smaller guy to shoot over you off balance from sort of eight, ten feet away from the basket, and you're bringing your hands down trying to block the shot. Um, you know, you put him on the free throw line. You know, to me, I'm telling our kids all the time, just, just be in the way, be in front of the guy and make them earn the shot. Guys are always going to make shots. You know, that, that's the reality of the sport. But you just want to make it as hard as possible for them. You know, fouling in that situation, you're just, you're, it's a cheap one and give them an opportunity to make them from the line. And TJ Henderson, first season here, first professional contract is spending it here in England from Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, averaging 26 points a game as AJ Bassey with the three. For Worthing, AJ Bassey, a native of Canada, with his first three of the game. And here is Henderson being marked by Hildreth. And now they switch. It's a woomy on him. Henderson with the step back three. That's beautifully it. done from TJ Henderson, who now moves on to seven points, having a quiet game by his standards so far. Yeah, great shot there. Comes oh, to the zone, as we talked about earlier. And Goddard inside. Nice pass there from Alex Awumi, and Goddard makes no mistake. Good composure, good patience from Worthing. Find the gaps in the zone. Don't need to force it. Leicester at the other end. The three there from Wilson was no good. And on the follow, I think that was Hal. Taylor. Kicks it out, Awumi for three. And Howe gets the rebound under pressure from Goddard, but Leicester come out with it. Here is Henderson, step back, pull up three for Henderson. Hildreth and Wilson were fighting over the loose ball. And as we see the replay of Josh Goddard's bucket, there are a couple of substitutions for the Warriors, Laman Willen coming back into the game. And Carl Pearson on the ball right now, back in as well. But that's a poor inbound pass, and Hildreth will collect it. Nice vision there from Hildreth. Bassey with a step back two is good for AJ Bassey. Again, you know, that's one of those shots that you, you, you know, Hearts in your mouth. If he makes it, it's a great shot. If he doesn't, you know, you've got no rebounders there. Um, but, yeah, great shot that time for Major. Bassi moves on to five points. Willen, and his jumper is good for Laman Willen. He likes his matchup against uh, Josh Collard, clearly. And Willen really favouring that pull-up jumper as well, driving to the hoop, stopping and shooting. He's got a few of them so far tonight. Hildreth. With the floater short, gets his own rebound and puts it in off the glass. Yeah, not a, not a great sh first shot from Cameron, but uh, followed it up with the miss and uh, managed to put that one in. And a slight look over from Nick Stevens on the commentary table. It was directly at you. I don't think you actually saw that, Danny. But <laughs> I, I agree, Nick. It was a bad shot. <laughs> well, here is the replay of that shot, but uh, Hildreth able to collect his own board and put it in off the glass. With 1.24 remaining, Thunder lead 49-36. I, fi I find that rebound is one of the toughest things to teach, and uh, I, I believe that some players have just got a knack for it. You know, you, it's not all about technic technique, it's not all about size. Um, you know, Dennis Rodman was the best example of that. Um, you know, some guys just go after it, and uh, that was the case for Cameron in that situation. Absolutely, and Awumi with the turnaround Too jumper good. is good. Too Beautifully strong. done. From Alex Awumi just taking advantage of the mismatch. Final minutes of this second quarter. What well, has been quite a free-flowing first half of action here at the Worthing Leisure Centre in our second NBL Live stream here on the Basketball England YouTube channel. If you've joined us, welcome. Three straight weeks of NBL action here as a turnaround jumper from Wilson is way off. Hildreth. Collects the loose ball, and here comes the Worthing Thunder number five. Kicks it out to 
Taylor and back to Hildreth. Here's Awumi. And Awumi's pass is off. And a foul oh. there from Ives. And it's an unsportsmanlike foul. And Danny, I know you, you sighed a little bit at that, but referees really clamping down on unsportsmanlike fouls, uh, especially going on the fast break. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a tough call whether you, you, you can determine whether or not the guy's deliberately making an attempt for the ball or whether he's deliberately trying to foul and stop the play. I think in that situation, Dominic actually genuinely made a play for the ball. Um, you know, but the, the rules are there in place and you know if you're going to catch somebody like that, you're running that risk. So going back to the earlier point, don't reach and, and that's then not an issue. Willen now with 13 points leads the Leicester scoring. Five of six from the field. He's having a good shooting night. He's playing very well. Right Absolutely. Now. And Leicester, you would say hanging in there. They're a tough team. They'll never quit on you. They're down double digits at the moment, but they will never, never lie down. They'll keep fighting to the final buzzer. That's just typical of a, a Carl Brown coach side. Yeah, exactly. These guys, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure they've been in this situation before. They're not phased by it. They're going to play the same way for 40 minutes, uh, you know, and at the end of it for them, they hope that they're going to come out on top. And Gale puts in a, a two. Leicester, of course, four and five. Five seconds left in the and game. It's the final seconds of this second quarter. Taylor with the ball. Taylor all the way is good on the buzzer. Beautifully done there from Zaire Taylor. And that brings an end to the half here at the Worthing Leisure Centre. Worthing Thunder lead 53 points to 40. And what have your, your thoughts been on this first half thus far, Danny? Yeah, I mean, I think it's been an exciting game for, from a spectator point of view. Uh, you know, I think it favours Worthing, 53. You know, you're talking uh, at this stage, you're talking about over 100 points. Um, you know, I think that definitely favours Worthing. Uh, the, the, the spells in the game where I think Leicester have been, uh, you know, had the better of Worthing when they've slowed the game down, they've executed well in the half court. Um, they have also put a bit of pressure on, uh, full court pressure to slow the, slow the game down and, and force these guys into, you know, taking tough shots at the end of a shot clock. But, um, you know, I, I think that the difference in the game right now is the, the experience and, and the mismatches that, that Worthing can have in the, in the, in the half court set. So... Um, I'm, I'm sure Carl will, will be talking to the guys and, and get them to, to focus a little bit more defensively, uh, be disciplined on offense and um, you know, try to turn things around in the second half. Absolutely. And one thing I, I've noticed, Worthing shooting the ball very well, 60% from the field overall. Alex Awumi leading the scoring with, with 16 points, but he's played all 20 minutes so far yeah i mean that that's not a surprise to me i mean alex consistently plays 40 38 39 minutes a game he's used to it um you know even at his right young age uh you know he's <laughs> he's perfectly capable of doing that um you know as i say you know experience is, is a is a wonderful thing and he's able to play multiple minutes and, and a high success rate um you know just purely down to the experience that he has on this game Absolutely, and on the flip side, Leicester shooting the ball. They're still shooting the ball relatively well, 45%. Uh, Leman Willen leading them with uh, 14 points. But what do you think Leicester need to do in this uh, second half coming up just to make the game more intriguing? Um, as I say, I, I, for, for, them, for, for them to win this game, I feel they really do need to slow the game down completely. Um, you know, the signs of the pressure. I mean, Worthing's a very tough matchup. You know, you saw AJ Bassey with a, with a three out of, the, out of the press as well. I just feel if they can slow the game down defensively for, for them, um, I think it, it's going to help them. Um, but, you know, Worthing, Worthing in Worthing. Uh, is a tough matchup for anybody. Uh, we keep saying it, but with, with multiple scorers from, from the perimeter, um, you know, you, you can play a great defense and, uh, you know, 22, 23 seconds gone in the shot clock and one of these guys is going to hit a three. Absolutely. So it's half time here at the Worthing Leisure Centre. Worthing Thunder lead 53 to 40 and we'll be back in about 10 minutes time. So Slam Jam is a new initiative by Basketball England, targeted at 17 year olds It's about getting the children to, to have fun, to link basketball with a fun experience so that we can get lifelong involvement in the sport. And it's really focused on engagement and a fun, positive first experience. So it's not so much about the skill development side of basketball. It's really just about giving people a positive first experience of basketball. They're having fun, they're with their friends. They can develop at their own pace in their own time. So it's 
really developing our coordination, core strength, as well as basketball skills. So there's not necessarily basketball specific games, but they've got basketballs thrown in there. So they'll be they're working on dribbling, shooting, passing in a less structured environment than like a training session. And it's yeah, just focused on fun and getting primary school age children engaged. When they come to the first slam jam session, they get a t-shirt which they can keep. Each primary school they get some slam jam basketballs and a little goodie bag that the children can take home. And another thing, throughout the session, if we see like someone's doing really good at a certain skill or teamwork or being just nice and friendly to other people, they can get stickers. Good practice and sportsmanship as well as being good at the skills. So I think the reason this programme is different is that there's a 12 week curriculum and there's different things to work on. And obviously, as a coach, you can kind of chop and change a little bit as is appropriate for the age group that you're teaching. But it just means that everybody's getting that same fun, first positive experience. Literally, we're just trying to get them to have positive experiences with basketball so that later on they can be maybe even just a supporter of the game. Go online, get in touch with Basketball England. They can also search Sam Jam for the local centres to them that run the initiative and they can inquire, maybe even get a coach to come in and run a 12-week session.
So Slam Jam, it's a new initiative by Basketball England, targeted at 7 to 11 year olds. It's about getting the children to, to have fun, to link basketball with a fun experience so that we can get lifelong involvement in the sport. And it's really focused on engagement and a fun, positive first experience. So it's not so much about the skill development side of basketball. It's really just about giving people a positive first experience of basketball. They're having fun, they're with their friends. They can develop at their own pace in their own time. So it's really developing on coordination, core strength, as well as basketball skills. So there's not necessarily basketball specific games, but they've got basketballs thrown in there. So they'll be they're working on dribbling, shooting, passing in a less structured environment than like a training session. And it's yeah, just focused on fun and getting primary school age children engaged. When they come to the first slam jam session, they get a t-shirt which they can keep. Each primary school they get some Slam Jam basketballs and then a little goodie bag that the children can take home. And another thing throughout the session, if we see like someone's doing really good at a certain skill or teamwork or being just nice and friendly to other people, they can get stickers. Good practice in sportsmanship as well as being good at the skills. So I think the reason this program is different is that there's a 12 week curriculum and there's different things to work on. And obviously, as a coach, you can kind of chop and change a little bit as is appropriate for the age group that you're teaching. But it just means that everybody's getting that same fun, first positive experience. Literally, we're just trying to get them to have positive experiences with basketball so that later on they can be maybe even just a supporter of the game. Go online, get in touch with Basketball England. They can also search Sam Jam for the local centres to them that run the initiative and they can inquire and maybe even get a coach to come in and run a 12-week session. OK, we're back here at the Worthing Leisure Centre, about to start the third quarter. Worthing Thunder lead 53 points to 40 over the Leicester Warriors. Danny, you've had a, a chance to look at the statistics. You know, anything, obviously we spoke about the field goal percentage, anything else that stood out for you? No, I mean, obviously with a high field goal percentage, you expect the assist to be up. But, um, you know, uh, Worthing with... Uh, 14 assists, is it, I think? It's around in. that, yeah. yeah. 14 assists going into the second half, that's that's great. But, you know, just again, just goes to show how, you know, a, m a number of guys can shoot the basketball on this team. They share the ball well, um, you know, hit the open man, and, uh, you know, that makes good for, for a good offense. Absolutely. And just a few other scores to, to bring you tonight. Three results uh, in a, another busy period of uh, NBL Division One action. The Bradford Dragons defeating the Westminster Warriors 104 to 90 and the, kind of an, a, a shocking result here Thames Valley Cavaliers losing at home to the Nottingham Hoods 95 102 to 95 and uh, the Solent Kestrels remaining unbeaten they defeated the Loughborough Riders 99 to 85 and uh, next week we'll be back in Solent for a, a double header of uh, NBL live action starting with our coverage of the WNBL Division 1 action as the uh, Solent Kestrels women take on the Loughborough Riders and then that's followed by the men's team Solent Kestrels looking to keep their unbeaten record intact as they play the Hemel Storm. So here we go back to the action as we are 
ready to start the third quarter here in Worthing. Both teams with the same starters. And exactly, yep, same teams as before as you were. And Leicester with the first possession of the third quarter. TJ Henderson, here is Gale. Worthing switching everything on all the screens. Henderson thought about the three, instead kicks it out, puts it inside on the floor is Howe, and he puts it in on the follow off his own miss. Just going after it, you know, not expecting the ball to go in. Gale now moves on to nine points for the Warriors. Here is Hildreth. Looking to post up Zaire inside with a mismatch well, in the Worthing, post. Worthing you know, using the post quite a lot. Bassey puts up a three and knocks it down off the kick from Taylor. Yeah, they're shooting a great percentage from behind the arc tonight. They're playing really well. Women and Awumi comes up with it. Here is Hildreth. And Hildreth slows it down. And a poor pass from Hildreth. TJ Henderson picks it up. Trying to find Dominic inside when Alex was open. And Henderson puts in the two. And it's 56-44 to the Thunder. Taylor finds Dominic Ives. He stepped out of bounds. It'll be a Leicester possession here in the opening stages of the third quarter. Some of the fans just finding their way back from the cafe. Yeah, back-to-back -back turnovers for, for Worthing. Uh, not, not the start they wanted, I'm sure. And the replay of TJ Henderson's uh, basket. TJ Henderson was actually looking for a foul on that play as well, but uh, the referees saw nothing wrong. Here is Henderson on the ball. Going Powell. Back, going back into the post, successful last time. And Howell off the glass is short to Woomi with the rebound. That's a Woomi's third rebound of this game. Here is, Hill, uh, here is uh, Taylor, excuse me. Taylor loses the ball. And a fight there on the floor. And it will be a possession arrow. It will stay a Worthing possession. As you can see, Zaya Taylor in, in shot there. And just talk about, uh, Daniel, um, since this is, I uh, think, Taylor's third season with the Thunder, what kind of impact has he had on this ball club? Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, he's, uh, he's changed the, the dynamic of the, of the club and how it's run, um, you know, running the club himself, uh, being the, you know, sort of on-court coach as a player as well. Um, you know, it's uh, a bit a bit like the semi-pro situation. Uh, I don't think he sold a washing machine yet for a player, but uh, no, he, he he knows what he's doing. He has a vision. He has a goal. I've spoke to Zaya on a number of occasions, and uh, you know, I like I like what he's doing with the, this group of guys on the floor. Absolutely, a number of uh, talks as uh, the referee just talk, having a quiet word there with Carl Brown on that last possession. T.J. Henderson fouling Zaya Taylor, and a lot of conver conversations we've had over the summer. Uh, of Taylor, who really wants to change the structure of um, Worthing Thunder basketball, but also Sussex basketball as a whole. We'll get to that in just a second as Cole Pearson on the ball. Here is Hal for the Warriors. Henderson puts up a three and rattles around and pops out. And it's a Worthing Thunder possession. And obviously Sussex basketball is... Uh, you know, such a strong knit community, Daniel, obviously led by Worthing Thunder, but so many junior clubs, obviously the Sussex Bears in Division 2, Bogner GSD in Division 3, uh, Luke Atfield and Ian Marshall, both ex-Worthing Thunder players are on that team. You know, just talk about, you know, we've been involved in Sussex basketball for many, many years. Just talk about uh, the community and the fraternity that exists within this uh within this county yeah I mean obviously the, the, the best thing for me about this is you have different levels of competition so obviously here at Worthing you've got division one Sussex Bears you've got division two uh, and GSD you've got division three um, you know the it gives it gives players locally uh, the opportunity to, to play uh, at lots of different levels um, there's a number of um, uh, there's a number of um, junior clubs in the area as well um, we've had a, a huge number of successes individual successes uh, you know come through through this club obviously with me involved uh, 
with Hosanna Katenge, who's now just signed his four-year con- um, scholarship over in Coastal Carolina in America. Uh, you know, but you want to take that further back to the likes of you know, Tom Ward, Ben Mockford, um, you know, Sell Behind Wheels, who was uh, up in um, Crawley as well. Um, you know, there's a, there's a number of players uh, who, who are excelling from Sussex. Uh, you know, there's another strong programs. You know, Sussex Storm, obviously, with back-to-back national championships last year in the juniors, junior ranks. Um, you know, doing really well. And on that last possession, Leman Willen with the foul and the bucket. And here is the replay as Leman Willen driving strong on Alex Awumi and putting it in off the glass. Bit of a tough call, I think, there for, uh, for on Alex. Uh, I think the officials done a good job tonight, but, um, you know, conversely, what I was saying about guys reaching in, he, he played with his hands up, had, you know, tried to get in front of the guy. I think that was a bit of a tough call. And Leicester now six of nine from the free throw line as Awumi puts up another three, knocks it down, and the foul. Alex Awumi having a fantastic shooting night for the Thunder. That's his fifth three of this game. He's only missed one. Coach's nightmare, no foul a shooter. Um, you know, Alex is a great shooter. You want to contest his shot, but uh, you know, you don't want to give him an opportunity to, to get to the free throw line and, and make the matter worse. Alex Awumi now with a chance with the four point play. Thunder up 61-46 and he makes no mistake from the foul line. Alex Awumi. There's uh, seven minutes left in the game. Um, And a miss there from Carl Pearson Hildreth with the rebound with 6.55 remaining in this third quarter. And Ives looking for the pass but finds no one but Martin Gale for the Warriors. Gale puts up a three and knocks it in. Martin Gale from downtown. That's the thing with that. They just don't go away. They won't go away, you know. Um, reducing the lead back to 13, but it was 16. Worthing had possession. Should have come up with something better than that. Um, you know, credit to these guys. They're going to keep fighting to the end. And Bassey knocks down a three in response. Both teams now trading long-range bombs. Anything you can do, I can do better, Absolutely. Huh? Pearson. Thunder up 65-49, 6-10 remaining in the third quarter as we continue to have issues with our clock. Pearson, Henderson, shot clock winding down. Henderson for three is back good. Back to back to back. We got ourselves an old-fashioned shootout. And TJ Henderson, as you can see, the replay of TJ Henderson's long three beating the shot clock buzzer. Taylor. Putting the moves on Henderson, kicks out Ives, another three, and okay. that goes in. Five threes in a row from both teams. <laughs> Head coach Nick Stevens, we've got a long range shootout going on, he says. Henderson for three, and the three point contest Heat ends check. there. Heat check. <laughs> and it'll end there, Danny, as, as uh, Roderick Howe will go to the line for two shots. Now put a, a smile on, I think, on everyone's faces, I think, those, those uh, that three-point, mini three-point contest as yeah. Carl Pearson will take a seat and uh, you and James comes into the game. Yeah, and as I said earlier, you know, you, you come to, to a Division One game and you've got a big crowd like this, you know, less, you know, I, I don't know if it is, is great for the home crowd because you, you know, the home team, sorry, because you, you know, you've got your home crowd there. But, you know, for the years that I was here, you know, quite often we we play teams that, that didn't shoot the ball particularly well. You scout them, you look at them, whatever. They come here and they shoot the lights out. So, you know, maybe they just, you know, stepping up for the crowd or something. I'm not sure. But, yeah, we've we got a great, certainly a great game so far. And Roderick Howe makes both of his free throws. A native of uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina. Averaged 11 points, and uh, or yeah, 11 points. Sorry, in his senior year at uh, North Greenville, and this is his first season, like T.J. Henderson, his first season as a professional player. Yeah, Jabby back into the game. Uh, I thought he gave them great, great minutes in the first half. He only played six minutes, came up with three rebounds and uh, a couple of blocks in there as well. So uh, I think he causes them trouble. So see what see what he can do this time. Henderson with Bassi on him. 
Henderson kicks it out to Jabby. And here is Jabby on the ball. Turnaround jumper from Jabby is no good. Hildreth and James were fighting for the rebound. And it will be a Worthing possession. So with 4.50 remaining in the third quarter, Worthing lead 68-54. Here is Hildreth. Hildreth, nice pass to Bassi. Oh, Bassi misses the layup. Good look from Cameron against the zone. And Hildreth with the, uh, the foul there as Laman Willen was driving to the hoop. And that's Willen's first foul. Well, that's Hildreth's first foul. Check that. Bit of a tough call for Cameron, I think. 4.38 remaining in this third quarter. Well, I might be biased, John. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything about <laughs> you being biased towards Cameron. Not at all. No, no. <laughs> Trust me, that's, that's the last thing. <laughs> We're not going to argue on air, surely not. <laughs> Gale with the short jumper is no good. And it's a worthing possession. Hildreth left it out this time. And Ishmael Fontaine will check into the game. And AJ Bassey will take a seat. Good to see so many people leaving some comments on our Basketball England YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And good to see the comments flowing through. It's been raining threes for definite as a Wumi tried to add to that, but his three was no good. That's just his second missed three of the game. Yeah, Alex is having a, a, a very good game. Very good game. Uh, again, you know, Leicester's gone back to their zone, um, you know, sort of daring Worthing into shooting them. I know they're shooting at a high success rate, but, you know, sometimes you, you've got to put teams, uh, you know, switch things up on teams and, and see how they're going to deal with it. Henderson, Gale, kicks it out, Willen. Willen with a mid-range jumper is way off and Ives collects the long rebound. Here is Taylor, almost double teamed there, but he finds a way out and puts it over the timeline. A Wumi inside, turns his man and scores. 3.35 remaining in the third quarter and Thunder up by 16. Here is Henderson. Willens had a quiet quarter by all accounts, you know, played really well in the first half. Only got two points in the second. Henderson with the three at the other end for the Warriors. Here is Taylor. Awumi looking for options, finds it in Hildreth. Taylor, Taylor with the floater, short. And Gale with the rebound. Henderson. Henderson looking for options. Floater goes up. And he'll go to the line for two. And a few of the uh, Leicester players looking for an unsportsmanlike foul there. As you see the replay of Henderson's floater attempt. And... Alex Wilson will come into the game and Willen will take a seat. Willen leaves the game, leads the team with 16 points, but TJ Henderson can overtake him. He currently has 16 of his own now from that uh, made free throw. And TJ Henderson, as said, native of Indianapolis, Indiana, 31 points in the loss to the Loughborough Riders last week, but that's not been strange for him he's just been really free with putting his points in yeah definitely yeah he's done he's done a good job so far Oberon Lacroix comes into the game for Zaire Taylor Hildreth Awumi Ives puts up a three and it rattles around and pops out and here's Henderson so, as I said, the zone daring, worthing into shooting from outside, uh, working in their favour at the moment. And Fontaine got a piece of that TJ Henderson jump shot. Here is Hildreth, kicks it out, Awumi for three. And Fontaine picks up the loose ball. Awumi thought about the three, instead kicks it out. Fontaine from deep, and that's long. And James gets the rebound. Here is Henderson, putting the moves on Hildreth. 
and Henderson sees some daylight, kicks it out. Wilson, open three, makes no mistake. Alex Wilson, who plays well in spots off the bench for the Warriors, and he connects from the corner. Yeah, Leicester cut the league into to, to single digits uh, for the first time in a while. Hildreth, and his pass goes out of bounds. Lacroix couldn't hold it. And as you said, Danny, this is now, it's now an eight-point game. Very quietly, Leicester getting their way back into this. Yeah, they won't go away. We, we you know, said this at the start of the game. They're not, they're not going to go away. They're going to play the same way for 40 minutes. Um, you know, the mix-up in the, in the zone and, and changes of defence is causing Worthing some problems offensively. 1.35 remaining in the third quarter as Leicester clawing their way slowly but surely back into this. Henderson... Wilson, another three, and that's long this time. You and James, though, with the rebound, but it just stayed on the timeline. Henderson puts up a three, and Awumi collects the rebound. Here is Hildreth. Awumi. Hildreth kicks it out to Awumi. Nice little teamwork there from the two, and Awumi puts in a three. And... Thunder restore their double-digit advantage on that three-pointer from Alex Awumi. And Ewan James comes out. That's a big substitution. Jabby comes out as well, and Hal comes in. And Carl Pearson also into the game for the Warriors. Ewan James takes a breather. As you said, Daniel, Leicester really rotating their bench quite a lot, only brought eight players with them from the Midlands. Yeah, there's lots of ways you can get guys rest, you know, uh, either side of a quarter, either side of a timeout, after free throws and stuff, so they get a real-time rest as opposed to just a, a physical minute rest on the floor. Henderson's two was way off as the shot clock was winding down. It's a shot clock violation, Worthing possession. Good defence there. From the Thunder, as Zaire Taylor comes back into the game. I think Cameron Hildreth's going to take a seat. I think it's Oberon they're calling. I don't think he can hear that. And yeah, no, it, you're right. Sorry, it is Oberon Lacroix who will take a breather. Smart play, gets Zaire back in for the last possession. 31.6 seconds left in this third quarter. Imagine Zaire will run the clock down as much as he can. Well, Taylor has a double-double, 12 points, 10 assists. Has five rebounds to go with that stat line as well. Here is Taylor Zaya was with the move and doesn't even find the rim. Sorry. And on the move is Howell and he puts Six it seconds in. seconds to go, five, four. And the possession is, is he well, the shot clock time? winding down. He Taylor does. puts up a three and it's long. And that ends the third quarter. A good quarter from the Leicester Warriors, but Worthing still leads 73-64. Is there cause for concern, Daniel, from the Thunder side of things? No, I don't think so. I just think they, you know, this this uh, quarter break's probably coming at the right time for them. They haven't had to burn a timeout, or they haven't used a timeout yet to discuss this. Uh, they need to be a little bit more aggressive uh, in, in the zone. They don't want to rely just on on, on jacking threes. Um, you know, if they can get some stuff going to the basket, draw the defense in, and then you know hit the open ones. There was a play where Cameron and uh, Alex moved the ball a couple of times, and Alex had his feet set, and that that went. That was great. Um, you know, they, they don't want to just come down and, and, and force up shots from outside unnecessarily. Absolutely, both teams still shooting the ball rather well. Worthing 55 percent, Leicester 43. Is there, is there anything else in a, a standpoint that stands out to you? Uh, you know, just going back to it, you're shooting a high percentage, you know, 20 assists for, for Worthing. Um, you know, they, they, they had six turnovers in that quarter, which, you know, probably accounts for, for, for the difference in, in, in the, the margin score. Um, but, yeah, as I say, you know, I think I think, I think Leicester mixing up their defences, slow the offences down. You know, obviously they've made some shots, that, that's going to help. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel for, for Worthing going into, into this fourth quarter, um, you know, they, they, they need to get some stuff inside. You know, early on in the game, they were posting up Alex, posting up Zaire. Uh, let's, let's get the ball inside a little bit and, and then free up the outside afterwards. Absolutely. And as the uh, final quarter is set to begin here at the Leisure Centre, just uh, 
quickly uh, mention our sponsors for tonight. Game night sponsors for NBL Live Dynamic, Wilson and Sports Serve. As you can see, the big crowd here at the Worthing Leisure Centre tonight, as you can see. And uh, as you can see, our game night sponsors there on the graphic, were Wilson Sports Serve and Dynamic. I even beat the producers to it. <laughs> Daniel, you know, obviously being a head coach here for Worthing Thunder for many years and a player, you know, just talk about the um, the crowd. I know we briefly touched on it before before the uh, the game started, but another big house here at, at Worthing Thunder. Just what does it mean to have this you know kind of game night here at the Worthing Leisure Centre? Yeah, I mean, it, Worthing's had a history of, uh, of successful basketball. Um, you know, always had a, a big crowd. Uh, it gets it gets you going out there, you know. Nobody wants to play in front of, you know, one man and his dog. Uh, you know, and I feel that that, that Worthing gets the uh, off court stuff right, and then you know, the on, on court stuff is great. You know, it's exciting to watch lots of threes. It's exciting to watch them pass the ball so well. Um, you know, gets people coming back through the door each week. Absolutely, and Zaya Taylor with the layup there, and Worthing have won trophies in their last two seasons. Ewan James for three is short. And Fontaine with the rebound. Here is Taylor. Taylor kicks it out. Fontaine thought about the three instead, drives to the hoop. Taylor loses the handle. Shot clock winding down, and Taylor runs out of room. In fact, no, he doesn't. It's a foul by Lamon Willen. That's his second foul of the game. It's 9.01, opening stages of the final quarter here at the Worthing Leisure Centre. Next week, we will be taking NBL Live back to Solent as the Solent Kestrels women will be action against Loughborough Riders. Taylor inside for two. As I said in the quarter break, you know, try to get the ball inside a little bit. Uh, Zaire with a post up there. Gives Worthing back the double-digit lead. Absolutely, and uh, as said, after the Solent Kestrels women take on Loughborough, Solent Kestrels men will take on the Hemel Storm in what will be a fantastic doubleheader of NBL action. Fontaine strips it off Willen. A poor pass, but Hildreth comes up with it. Hildreth loses the ball, but it stays a Worthing position. And Daniel. Cameron, having, having, not having a bad game, but by his standards so far this season, he's only had six points, but you know, distributing the ball quite well, but scoring-wise, not having the best of nights. Yeah, I mean, the, the, these guys, Alex and Zaire in particular, you know, they're really trying to help him develop his game on, on, on all assets. Um, you know, these guys are talking to him a lot about facilitating the ball a little bit more. Uh, you know, he's going to get his opportunities to score. He's shown his opportunities to score. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to get him to, to be a leader out there as well. Um, and I think that's possibly what, what's going on today. He seems to be moving the ball a little bit more. And here is Hildreth. Putting the moves on Gale and puts it in off the glass. He now moves on to eight points. Maybe not. <laughs> Attacking the veteran Martin Gale. But as you see now on your screen, you know, Alex has gone straight over to Cameron. Uh, you know, this is a big reason why he's here. You know, having somebody like Alex to, you know, he's in his ear the whole time. You know, he's talking, you know, uh, giving advice constantly uh, throughout the game and practiced after the game and stuff. And, you know, uh, a decision to, to keep him here in Sussex um, when, you know, Many people will say he should have gone to a, a, an academy. You know, what we run at, at Holy Trinity School, um, you know, we're offering him as much, if not more, probably, than what he can get. You know, but to have the, the sideline of the Worthing Thunder program is, is great. You know, our relationship with Zaire and, and, and what we're doing with our Storm program, um, you know, gives Cameron the opportunity, but also many players' opportunity to, certainly Sussex-based players, you don't have to travel away. The grass isn't always greener. You know, we, we're providing this, you know, elite academy. Uh, we have an elite national league program, and now we have uh, a relationship with the Division One program that the pathway is there in place for you. You don't need to go away if it's not right. If it's right for you and you need to do that, obviously we support that. But if you don't have to, then then why do you? Why Absolutely. should you go? Absolutely. Yeah. No. And obviously, speaking of Holy Trinity Storm, you're undefeated in the in the academy basketball league, led by Cameron Hildreth. You uh, got a victory over the Sussex Bears. 
you know, just briefly talk about um, the season for Holy Trinity in the ABL. Yeah, you say that. You know, I mean, obviously Cameron's priority is, uh, you know, is, is this. It's, it's game nights on Saturday, Division One. We have a, an, a great team of, of guys over there at Holy Trinity. Um, we've had a, a good start to the league, um, and you know Cameron's playing limited minutes in that division, um, so that he can come out and, and obviously hopefully perform on uh, on game night here for Division One. Here is Taylor. Ives oh, on the turnaround, fakes his man, goes up but blows the layup, and Gale with the rebound. Here is Henderson driving in a Wumi. Henderson off the glass is good. Beautifully done by TJ Henderson. So here we are again, seven minutes ago in the game, and uh, Leicester have cut the lead back to eight. Um, you know, Worthing being lulled into this zone, moving the ball, and, uh, you know, they've got to come up with a couple of big possessions now to keep Leicester at bay. And Henderson now on to 22 points. Hildreth all the way, and a foul. Almost a circus shot there from Cameron Hildreth, but found a slither of room and made no mistake. Yeah, he's a bit of a clown, John. <laughs> no, I'm what's, joking. What's more shocking is we still have not argued over the fact that if anything happened to Cameron, you would be on my case. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. Not, not at all. Um, you know, uh, he, he can score in a variety of different ways. I think everybody's seen that already. Um, you know, early on in the year, he had 30 points against Barking, first game of the season. And I think, you know, the, 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 the critics out there would say, well, you know, that's against an academy program. I love what Barking are doing there, having their guys in Division One. Uh, the big one for me was last week, a couple of weeks ago, against Hemel. You know, one of the top teams to come up with 30 points, only missed one shot in the game. I mm. think, uh, you know, that was really a true test of what level he's playing Absolutely. at this year. And Cameron posted it on his own Twitter feed um, earlier on as Henderson gets Great stripped by Taylor, here. and now Hildreth on the break. Hildreth around the back. Beautifully done from Cameron Hildreth, and he's finding a rhythm here in this fourth quarter. I think he heard you earlier on, John, when you said he hasn't <laughs> scored the ball very much this game. Carl Pearson driving and scoring. Carl Pearson, the veteran. He's been with the Leicester Warriors his ninth season with the Warriors. Hildreth puts up a three and knocks it in. Cameron Hildreth on fire in this fourth quarter. Oh God, I've got it's to the with commentator's this now. <laughs> curse, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, in reverse. <laughs> commentator's curse in reverse. Now let's see what Leicester have got now. They've uh, they've moved the ball. They've got good execution the last few possessions. Let's see what they end up with this time. Cameron Hildreth almost single-handedly putting Thunder back up by double digits. Gale for three. It rattles around and goes in. They will not go away. Leicester not giving up the fight. Taylor. Kicks it out, Awumi for three, makes no mistake about it, Alex Awumi from downtown. Money ball. <laughs> <laughs> and a bit of singing on the commentary from Daniel Hildreth. No, that's not <laughs> Here is Hal. Pearson. Henderson, slither of room. Stepped out of bounds, it'll be a thunder possession. And TJ Henderson. Thought he had a bit of room, but his foot was out of bounds. Big, big couple of possessions, I feel, now for, for Worthing in particular, if they want to, you know, try and keep the pressure, keep the pressure on Leicester. Um, you know, Leicester really don't want this to get up to 16, 17 points in the next few possessions. Five minutes, 17 to go in the game. Um, let's see what Worthing come up with this time. Thunder up, not 89-76 with 5-10 remaining. AJ Bassey for three, way off. And it will be a Leicester possession. And as I look through the comments, uh, Hosanna Katenge has actually commented. He is watching the stream. So I'm going to ask the question that he's asking. Your basketball career. Obviously, you've been successful in, in many different places. You've you know, played here, obviously here at the Worthing Thunder, Derby Storm, Brighton Bears. You know, just yeah. what, what high, <laughs> particular highlights do uh, you have as a player? You know what? The biggest highlight, I know this sounds corny, is, is the friends that I've made along the way mm. as, a, as a player and as a coach. Um, you know, and that young man you're talking about right now is very, very special. Um, I'm very, very proud of him. Um, at, at, at 12, 13 years old, he came to a trial. 
Uh, he came to a trial uh, 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 slightly overweight, and when I say slightly, he was very overweight. Uh, Twelve-year-old kid. Is that why um, he wants me to talk about you? He, he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> but I'm going to get him back for it. I'm going to get him back for it. Um, you know, and and the decision was: do we take him or do we take another really big kid, Connor Tierney? Uh, you know, you talk earlier. We talked earlier about you know successes of. of uh, Sussex basketball, you know, we took them both. I said, we've got to take both these kids. We don't know where they're going to end up. Hosanna obviously now is, you know, in, in college in America, uh, living his dream at this point. And Connor is in the high school in the States uh, with a very, very bright future ahead of him. Uh, you know, two Sussex-based kids, you know, corny as it sounds, living the dream. Yeah, absolutely. And Connor, obviously, uh, product of the Sussex Bears basketball program now playing yeah, you say he's a product of the Sussex Bear program. He was a product of the Worthing Thunder program <laughs> un under myself at the time. So I'm going to take some credit Ooh. for that one too. No, I'm joking. Ooh, it's, it's all, it's all in chess. Shots have been fired no, already. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, honestly, I, I truly believe this. This is about the kids, the individual kids. You know, uh, you know, Hosanna, Connor, you know, Tom when he went away, Luke, all these guys. It's about the individuals. We're giving them opportunity. They're taking their opportunities more than others, which is why they're successful. And one of those products, as we've documented earlier, Cameron Hildreth with the inbounds. Here is Taylor. Of course, Taylor, a product of Staten Island, which is a little bit of a distance away from England, but he is here on the south coast. Here yeah. is Hildreth. Hildreth, step back three, in and out. And Taylor fights for the rebound and wins it. Awumi thought about the three. Poor pass, finds how. Here is Henderson who can break for the Warriors. Henderson, a, a mountain of players, tough as shot. you said, tough shot, but he puts it in. And as you saw on the replay, Henderson now with 24 points, as you can see, shooting over a trio of Thunder players. Here is Bassey for the Thunder, Hildreth attacking, and he's gonna go to the line for two shots. And Leicester coach Carl Brown, not happy with the defense there from the Warriors. Yeah, um, clearly there was a miscommunication. Uh, player coach uh, discussing this. Uh, maybe one thought they were in the zone, another thought in a man. Maybe it was a mismatch uh, issue. Um, yeah, clearly, clearly they're they're disagreeing with this one. And Hildreth to the line for two. Worthing Thunder leading 90 to 78 now with 4:05 remaining in the final quarter. Every, every possession vital now, certainly and for Leicester. Can, exactly, and as you pointed out, every possession counts, and especially trips to the free throw line. You've got to make your free throws, especially in these last four minutes. Henderson for three, is long, excuse me, and Ewan James with the offensive rebound. Inside it goes, off the glass, no good. Awumi with the rebound, Great and Hildreth can break. Hildreth spots up for three. I'm not sure that was the best shot for, for Worthing on that possession. And it's almost like a carbon copy of the second quarter when Bassey had that uh, three-point opportunity that he missed with Hildreth open. It was the opposite way round here as, Hild as uh, Pearson goes up and on the follow was Hal. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously if he makes that shot, you know, it's a, a big margin and, and looks great. But if you miss it, you have to question whether they should have uh, got a better one on that possession. Leicester with 12 offensive rebounds with 3.10 remaining in the game. Ives missed the three. Henderson with the rebound. That's Henderson's fourth rebound of the game. Gale for three is good. And the Leicester Warriors are not going away. 91-83 with 2.54 remaining. Yeah, I'm surprised there wasn't a timeout after that one. Um, you know, back to single digits. A couple of... Uh, Ill-advised shots for Worthing. You know, you want to make sure you get a good one now. Maybe the experience of the guys, right? Gone back into the post. Bassey nearly lost the ball. Kicks it out. Nice passing around from the Thunder. Hildreth with a wild shot. It goes in as the shot clock wound down. Cameron Hildreth behind the basket. He I, had to put up something. I taught him that one, John. <laughs> I didn't. You didn't, no, I was, <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I know they couldn't see us on the screen, but the evil look from myself said it all. <laughs> and a timeout has been called by the Warriors. And 
what have you made of this of this fourth quarter, particularly Cameron Hildreth, who's stepped up in this final quarter to give Worthing or maintain Worthing's advantage? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing about this team is is they literally take it in turns. Mm. You know, I, I genuinely feel that. You watch this, you know, Alex was exceptional in the first quarter. Then you might have Zaire have 8, 10, 12 points in a quarter. Uh, Dominic was great as well. Um, you know, and, and that, for, for what it's worth now, it, it's Cameron's time. I, I don't think, you know, they're really not worried about who. They're worried about what. And if they're getting the right shots, um, you know, at the right time, then then that's great for these guys. They share the ball well. You can see it in the score each week. You know, multiple players in double figures, multiple players in 20-plus points. And with 2.22 remaining, one thing we haven't touched on so far, Danny, is um, obviously this week the BBL trophy draw was made. Of course, National Basketball League teams involved in it. Worthing Thunder being one of them, they've got an away trip to, to the Manchester Giants. Solent are going to be playing the London Lions at the Copper Box. You know, if you were Coach Stevens, you know, what would you be making of, of that draw against Manchester? Well, I mean, I have been Coach Stevens. We were uh, in that, that same competition when I was here. Uh, we played uh, what was Merseyside the Mersey, it was Tigers the Mersey at the time. Tigers, yes. And I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we were the first NBL Division One team to beat a BBL team in that competition, which we were, I can tell you that. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, so I, I, I've been there. You know, at the end of the day, this is a sport. The ball is round, anything can happen. You know, you're not talking about your average NBL Division One team. You've got two B BBL All Stars on this roster. Um, so I believe they go there with confidence. Uh, I think the biggest factor from the, the jump of level is the physicality, the speed of the game and the depth of the team. Um, so it would be really interesting to see how those guys fare when they travel to Manchester. Here is Taylor Hildreth with good defence there on Henderson. Hildreth inside to Ives and he misses the layup. Really poor uh, layup attempt there from Dominic Ives. But, but he, he made up for it. Back, he made up it for back. it. And Hildreth all the way makes no mistake on tra in transition. Yeah, biggest thing as a, as a, from a coach, you know, if a, if a player makes a mistake, misses a shot, what are you going to do in the next possession? You're going to make up for it, get a rebound, take a charge. In that instance, Dominic came up with a steal, great pass to Cameron to finish the layup. And nearly good defence there, but the referee spotted a foul. Hildreth now moves on to 19 points, had six points uh, to start this fourth quarter. The legend Tim Brown with the call. And <laughs> Tim Brown, of course, a long time uh, official and uh, advocate of Basketball England here refereeing tonight. Here is Henderson. And Ewan James missed the handle, but instead picks it up, puts up a long two or short two. Taylor with the rebound. Good composure. I'd run the clock down now if they're smart. Absolutely, as I said, time is on Thunder's side, up 8, 95, 83. Nice Ives inside is good. Beautifully done there from AJ Bassey to find Dominic Ives. And that's Bassey's fourth assist of this game to go with 11 points. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't count Leicester out just yet. You know, 127 on the clock. Um, these guys have not gone away yet. I don't expect them to now, although that should be a charge. Oh, sideline. No, they'll get yeah, sideline there. And it's going to be a worthing possession. Yeah, that's, that's definitely not what Leicester wanted at this stage in the game. Absolutely not. And Hildreth has... Bassey puts up a three, knocks it down. The dagger has been stuck Hero in the ball. Leicester Warriors. One thirteen remaining. Yeah, I think I think that's probably sealed the game. Um, as long as uh, Worthing don't do anything crazy. And Pearson steps out of bounds. A number of turnovers from the Warriors in the final minute of this game. And yeah, as you said, AJ Bassey, we, you know, we said that was the dagger three-pointer, and obviously the turnovers are not helping as Thunder are up 100 to 83 as we count down the final minute of this game. Yeah, two possessions in the road to step out of bounds. You know, that's unforgivable. You know, you've, you've kept yourself in the game for, for 38 minutes. Um, you know, and you were still in the game with just over a minute to go. I, I, I'd be pretty yeah. mad if I was Carl Brown right now. And Bassey puts the finishing touches with a floater off the glass. Pearson for the Warriors goes up and he'll go to the line for two. But it's a, a sixth straight NBL League victory. It looks set to be for the Worthing Thunder seven in all competitions if you count the National Cup win 
over Ipswich and for the Warriors they will be dropping to four and six, six sorry, in the league. And Carl Pearson going to the line for two shots. Now, give give credit to, to Leicester. You know, I know it's an 18-point uh, margin on the scoreboard. I don't think that's a true reflection of the game. Uh, you know, literally the last few minutes of the game, it, 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 it's opened up. But, um, uh, you know, I think it's been a, a great spectacle. I think they put on a great show for the guys and uh, they've made Worthing win the game rather than just giving it to them. Absolutely. And before we, uh, well, while we count down the final few seconds of this game, it's been fantastic to see so many people commenting on the Basketball England YouTube channel. A lot of people watching at the moment as well. Great to see, and we'll be back on your screens next week in Southampton. Ives for three is no good. Final 25 seconds of the game. Henderson all the way is good off the glass, but it is mere consolation as Hildreth slows it down. Shot clock turned off. The Worthing crowd on their feet. And we will be in Southampton next week. A doubleheader WNBL action as the Solent Kestrels take on the Loughborough Riders. And in NBL Division 1 action, the Solent Kestrels face off against the Hemel Storm. But here at the Worthing Leisure Centre, Worthing Thunder have defeated the Leicester Warriors 102 to 87. Daniel, your thoughts on this game? Yeah, as I said earlier on, I think the, the fast-paced game, the, the high-scoring game suits Worthing better. You know, they score over 100 points. I don't think there's too many teams beating them in this league. Um, you know, Solent have been exceptional so far, um, you know, and they, they held Worthing to, to one of their lowest scores of the season. So, you know, if they, if they can come out and gun against them, I feel that they're, they're, they can compete with anybody. Uh, credit to Leicester, they, you know, they didn't give up. Uh, they mixed things up defensively and, and made, as I say, made Worthing win the game rather than just handed it to them. Absolutely. Alex Awumi with 28 points, shooting 71% from the field to lead the Worthing Thunder. And TJ Henderson with 26 points to lead the way for the Warriors. But for us, for me, John Hobbs, for Daniel Hildreth, pleasure having you on board, sir. Thank you for having me. This has been the NBL Live here on the Basketball England YouTube channel. Thank you, everyone, and good night.